Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Live to Roll channel. We are doing another women's takeover. I'm so excited. We got some new faces in here today. Um, we're going to get into some deep topics. And yeah, um, so let's just go around. We're going to introduce ourselves first as usual. So if you guys don't know already, I am Brianna. I was um, wrongfully shot about four and a half years ago. I was sitting in my car when the gun went off behind my seat. The bullet lodged in T12 and I got fractured L1 through L5. Um, I know I say that so casually, I got called out on it the other day, um, but it's just, I think that we get used to saying like a short version and long version of our story. So that's just the short version of mine. <laughs> so let's go in order and um, let's go to Chelsea next. Hi everyone, I'm Chelsea. Um, I am from the Central Coast area and I'm a teacher and i was injured in a car accident which left me as a c4 yes thank you so much okay let's go to maya hey everybody um my name is maya i'm from chicago um i am a c5 quadriplegic i'm also a survivor of gun violence um i was injured in my neck you know i'm quad and um i'm glad to be here Thank you. Glad to have you. Okay, let's go to Norma. Hi, everyone. I'm Norma Villar. I'm from Pasadena, California, and I was injured in 2014 due to a surgery that left me having to have seven additional spinal cord surgeries. Thank you so much for joining us. And let's go to Ashley. Hi, guys. I'm Ashley. I was injured in the part of the quad and also yes thank you so much for sharing i'm so excited to be here today um so yeah let's get into some topics so um the first one that we're going to be getting into is pain pain management and um, dealing with nerves and spasms just what helps us what doesn't any stories that we may have um so for me pain is a big one um i've been in pain since the moment that i was shot um i felt like extreme like um, I want to say electricity in my stomach, um, and I was, I was in, an, so it's with a nerve pain, you know, nerve pain, basically, um, I describe it like a sunburn, when somebody slaps your sunburn, or if somebody like slaps your tattoo, any of that like stinging, burning feeling is what I felt throughout the bottom half of my body. Um, so because the bullet was lodged into C12, um, it, it, splattered so I had bits and pieces of the bullet throughout my back and the doctor said that they couldn't go in and remove it without making me a quad so I have no choice but to leave it inside um, which is very hard because it's pushing on different nerves and those nerves is what's causing me pain so um, I do have extreme lower back pain um, that's very very intense and then my um, the doctor said I have extreme hypersensitivity which is the nerve the nerve pain, you know? So there's different levels, you know, something with pain and with even nerves and spasms is basically we all only know our, our pain, you know? So it's kind of hard to compare um, the levels of it, you know? But yeah, so what I do um, to help me is I do take gabapentin and that's kind of to just take the edge off of the nerve pain. I have like how to minimize it in my day, but um, it's just hard for me to function without it. So basically it's like getting hit with like the strongest punch and then getting hit with the second strongest punch. Like it doesn't hurt as much, but it's, I'm still in a lot of pain, you know? And I do choose to be off of medication instead of on it. Um, I just don't like the way it makes me feel. I like being more aware of my surroundings. Um, in the beginning, they had me on tons of medication, morphine, Norco's, um, all kinds of different stuff. And I was just not myself. I was more depressed. I couldn't taste my food. I was nauseous all the time. Like, for me personally, it just didn't sit well with me. Um, but then having to deal with that pain is also so hard. So, like, even recently, I went to the doctors, and the doctor told me, at this point, it's not even about taking your pain away it's just about managing and I got tears in my eyes because I was like is this for is this a forever thing you know it makes me really overwhelmed because I don't think people that don't do this they don't understand like being in pain 24 7 is mentally and physically draining you know and it can make you turn really negative 
you know, and really angry really fast, you know. Um, it really dictates my mood, um, the pain that I'm in, you know, and, and that's hard. Um, for me, what I've learned how to deal with it is staying busy, honestly. Um, when I'm on a task, when I'm focusing on the next thing, it really helps me to just not focus on my pain. Um, for the first two years when I wasn't doing stuff, I would just sit in bed and just focus on all the pain I was in, be angry about all the pain I was in, and it was hell. You know, and when I started getting out and doing things and really um, trying to block it out, like really focusing on blocking it out and just not worrying about it, you know, it really made things so much easier for me. You know, of course, at nighttime, once I settled down, all that pain comes rushing to my body, you know, and it can still be frustrating. Um, some other things that help me is like hot showers that help me and smoking weed. I do smoke. Um, I have heard that, I mean, CBD helps as well. Um, but for me, it's just really expensive. So it's like whatever works best for you, right? So for me, THC has different benefits for me, so I prefer it. But some people prefer CBD because it attacks certain benefits for them, you know? So I do say experiment with it, you know? Um, it does help so many people. So yeah, um, that's just my advice on that. And um, let's go over to Chelsea. Yeah, so I... Um... I, right now I'm managing my pain with gabapentin, um, but since my injury, I've had really, really bad nerve pain, um, like from my shoulders down to my fingertips. Um, and when I was in the hospital, of course, I was on a bunch of other pain uh, medications as well. And I did try Lyrica for a little bit, um, but it, it honestly didn't really seem to help me at all when I was in rehab. So I just stuck with gabapentin and I do still take it. Unfortunately, I, I wish I could get off of it, but I have tried to kind of taper off of it. And it's, it was, it just, my pain was just really bad. So I continue to do, to take gabapentin. Um, but what I found that has helped me is like heat or like heating pads, um, hot showers, like you mentioned, really helped me a lot, especially at nighttime. Um, and also like smoking weed helps a lot. And I like to do that more towards the night as well. Cause it kind of helps like, you know, soothe and like calm my nerves and stuff and kind of gets me like ready, um, ready for bed and whatnot. Um, but also like, also, as you mentioned earlier, staying busy and always just kind of like you know, having something do helps a lot too. Um, and um, hanging out with friends and just kind of um, trying to stay like in an uplifting mood and stuff like that really helps as well. Um, yeah, totally. I totally agree. And I totally feel with like wanting to um, wean off of gabapentin, you know, or any medication, you know, because you just want to feel like you have that strength. But I also believe in don't making yourself suffer more, you know, like find your limit, you know, everybody's body is different. Like me personally, I am a different person if I do not take this medication and if my pain is so intense that I don't even want to you know. And so I feel like that's okay, you know, just know your limit. You know, there's a big difference of me taking a gabapentin pill or me being on like morphine and circles and like all these stuff that is like numbing my body. You know, there's a there's a big difference of like taking the edge off and completely being numbed out by the you know. Um, so yeah, definitely. Okay, let's go to Maya. Well, um, pain for me, I've really, I've dealt with a lot of nerve pain since the beginning of my injury and I actually was on 1600 milligrams of gabapentin a day um and i was like zombied out all the time and uh i chose to um taper down and i only i only take 300 milligrams at night now before bed um and all of the medication that they had me on in the beginning i've weaned myself off of i don't um i choose not to take any pain medication and um, I'm also a huge advocate of weed and CBD. Um, CBD can be expensive, but it helps me tremendously. Like, um, it takes a little bit to get into your system. So once I started taking it, it took about 10 days. But after that, it really helps, especially with Chicago weathers, like the winter. Being a quad, it is terrible. Um, between that and different heat things, I actually have 
a heated scarf because I'm mm. fused from C5 uh, to C7 and keeping my um, my metal warm in my body is one of the most important things or else I'm in so much pain. So I found that those are really the key for me and also exercise. Um, exercising a lot, like I watch a lot of um, YouTube videos and just sit there and do my exercises during the day because if not, I'm so tight in my back and that just causes more localized pain to my shoulder. I mean, I had a bullet lodged in my right shoulder, so the pain there is expected, but I try to minimize it as much as possible by strengthening, and um, I think that really helps a lot. Yeah, definitely. I love that heated scarf. I've never even heard of that. Where'd you get it at? My mom found it on Amazon, and she told me it was supposed to be a Christmas present, but like, I, I was freezing cold, so she was like, look, here, try this. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That's so cool. I'm sure tons of people are going to get it. They're going to have to give you a share of their money. <laughs> um, no, that's so that that's so great. Yeah, um, I agree with all those things. Something that also came to my mind is lidocaine. Um, really helps me too. You like just like a topical cream. And then recently I've been getting lidocaine injections and that's really been helping as well. So it's like a lidocaine mixed with like a steroid and um, it, it like it like gets deep into the tissue and basically relaxes it enough for me. So where my pain is located, I have knots in my back and the lidocaine um, makes those knots ease out where I'm able to move so much more better. I've only recently been trying it. This is like my second time doing it, but I really like it. The only downfall is to be like that week before the doctor's. So that week before the doctors, I feel like my body's getting tense again. And like, I really don't like that feeling at all. You know, I like to just like learn how to deal with it. But yeah, that's what else I've been doing. Okay, let's go to Norma. Did you say Norma? Yes. Hi, everyone, again. Hello. Pain. Um, after the seventh surgery I had, and by the way, I can't see you, Brianna. I can only see Sean and the other girl. Oh, no. Um... The rest Maybe of you because I'm using right? my phone, I don't know. Can but everybody see me? I can see the girls and Sean, but I can't see Brianna. Okay, no worries. Okay, no worries. So we can see you. Okay. okay. So I've never experienced uh, nerve pain up until the seventh surgery. And um, I didn't understand anyone in my community telling me uh, about their nerve pain. I didn't get it till it hit me. Um, what I experienced was... Uh, any any kind of movement in my bed, I would feel like I was getting electrocuted. And if I took a breath or exhaled, the pain would just intensify. That lasted a few months, and it was pretty scary. I, I was thinking one night, they're going to find me dead on my bed because I'm literally having to hold my breath with each of these spasms that are causing this uh, pain when I exhale. It tapered off on its own. They, they, the doctors did give me uh, gabapentin, and... I, the very lowest dosage of gabapentin because I'm not into taking any medications and I was feeling like a zombie. So I threw them down the toilet and to this day, it's been about two years since that uh, experience. Um, I take no medications for my uh, nerve pain. I've got it. It's not as intense but it's there and I've just learned to deal with it. I've learned um, keeping busy helped me, doing my boxing helped me, being in the community, talking to other spinal cord injury people helped me. Because of COVID, all that stopped and now I just have myself and time. And of course, I feel the pain a lot more. So I had a transition into um, eating. I eat a lot different now. Um, do a lot of ju green juices and a lot of turmeric and ginger and um, that's helped a lot with the chemical imbalances in my body as well. Drinking lots of fluids uh, eliminated a lot of my spasms. A perfect bowel movement eliminated a lot of my spasms. So all of that is triggered into my nerve pain and how I deal with it. Yeah, um, I think you touched on a great thing, which is like eating healthy. I don't think that a lot of times we associate the two, um, but it is important, you know, to keep your body healthy. That does cause a lot of pain when we're not having regular bowel movements, or even though we think it's regular, but it's really not, you know? Yeah, being super hydrated is very important. I've learned that for myself, drinking half of my body weight in water 
or in a, in a protein shake or however, in any kind of liquid, um, reduces my nerve pain, reduces my spasms and my overall mental health. Yeah, I agree so much. That That is a great point that you touched on. Okay, let's go to Ashley. Um, hi, guys. So for me, um, when I first got injured, I'm only like a year and like nine months out. So when I first got injured, I was in so much pain. Like any way they would turn me on the bed, whatever, I it was, it was just miserable. And I used to do the lidocaine patches like Brianna was saying. And... Then I got all I got out of the hospital and I couldn't, you know, insurance didn't come like that and those are kind of expensive. So I take I'll do the icy hot every now and then or heating pad as well. Um, but I also love I also love weed as well. That's it. Very pro weed. And that has helped tremendously because I was taking gabapentin and I still am once a day, but at one point I was taking it three times a day and I just didn't like the way it was so gabapentin wasn't working for me so weed ended up being and stretching helps as well with that i love stretching it feels so good um and i've also noticed with the weather change that the weather change really does affect my uh my pain i feel like it makes my muscles tighter and cold and in the summer i'm thriving with like less pain and then I also do get nerve pain in my fingers and my my legs. Even though I can feel them, I feel nerve pain, and I feel like you girls will understand that. Yeah. Even though we can't feel it, we can. Yeah. So I get nerve pain, and I still don't really have a way to deal with that one just yet. Yeah, um, you know, it's so hard. I think the main thing with this nerve pain and with spasm is that it's like I can't move my legs, but I could feel feel pain on them you know like why can't you just do what I want you to do instead of like hurting me you know and you, no, none of you guys really touched on spasms but I have friends that have such strong spasms where um like for instance when I'm laying down my knee will just want to like go up and like I've had friends where they're sitting in their chair and their hips are just like throwing them out of their chair so spasms are involuntary movements um, sometimes like my friends are just sitting in their, their chair and their legs will just start kicking up. And it's so frustrating because it's like, why can't you just do what I want you to do instead of doing what I don't want you to do, you know? So I think that's just really frustrating too, you know? It's definitely a hard point, but I'm just figuring what works best for you, you know? Um, so yeah. So the next topic well, I we're going to go to, yes, Ashley? To add, actually for spasms, I get really bad spasms when I first wake up in the morning. Like, I would be sitting up on my bed and up, like, all the way low because of my spasms. And, I don't know, I think that's also nothing that helps reduce your spasms. Yeah. yeah. also have terrible spasms. Like, my muscle tone is so bad. You know, I got a, um, a manual wheelchair in February. And now I'm to the point in winter, like, I can't even push myself because my arms just lock up. Like, it's terrible. Yeah, it's hard. Pain is a big one for dealing with people. And honestly, when I meet newly injured people, one of the first questions that they always ask me is like, how do you deal with the pain? When is this going to stop? You know, and that was my, those were my questions too, because it's hard, you know? Um, I think just over time, you realize that, you know, you can do different things to help. And honestly, pushing it aside and just me accepting that this is a part of my body now, and now what do I need to do to move forward? you know yeah. and I some days like, when I'm in more pain I have to accept that if I have something to do and I cannot do it I need to respect my body you know and I need to take a day off and as angry as that may make me um I can't focus on that you know I need to focus that at least I have the ability to take a day off you know and just be grateful for that so I think that that's really hard and um something that everybody deals with in this case. yeah I gotta really listen to your body it's fine over now. definitely um so for the next subject, we're going to be talking about physical therapy. So this is a big debated one in the community. Um, I know a lot of people have mixed emotions about what we're saying. So even with physical therapy and religion, I just want to say that we're just sharing our story. 
We're not telling you what you have to do or what you need to believe. This is just what helped us and what we personally went through. So yeah, I just wanted to talk on that. So um, uh, I definitely have a love-hate relationship with physical therapy. <laughs> you know, in the beginning, it was all about walking for me. Um, I was thinking, I'm doing this to walk. You know, I need to get stronger to walk. Everything that they're telling me is to walk. Um, I slowly started realizing that my physical therapy place wasn't really set up to, or equipped to help me walk. Um, they didn't have anything that, you know, somebody with a spinal cord injury should be using to really help them walk. Basically, they had me doing weights, they were my legs, and that was strictly based off my insurance. Um, I do have medical, so they didn't offer me better physical therapy, you know, and that made me really angry because I was like, only if I have money do I deserve to walk in your eyes, you know? And that just was a hard thing for me to grasp, you know, that that's even, you know, um, because for the places that are more equipped with it, you know, I definitely have a love-hate relationship with them as well because I feel like it's so great that they're helping people walk, right? Because there are people who are stronger. Um, this injury is very half and half. You know, um, but also there's a lot of people that have hope that they're going to walk again. And I think especially in the beginning that these places are banking off of people's desperateness, you know. And I think that makes me angry sometimes, you know. Um, and it sucks because I've talked to people who wasted money, you know, five years, nonstop, five days a week doing this, working so hard. Know? and um it sucks because nobody can tell us. It's, a, it's a personal journey you know if you have it you should do it do it you know but i think some people myself um it was easier for me to just accept that walking is hard for me right now um i feel like physical therapy for daily activities is so important you know even standing i i am a um a big advocate for getting standing frames as well because standing has a lot of benefits you know, um, but just when I talk about walking, it just is different for me. Um, in the beginning, it was a priority, and I felt like my life would be better if I could walk, right? I could only remember all the good things that happened in my life when I was walking. And my life would be so much easier if I could just walk, right? But when I went to the disability community, I started meeting all these people. And I started meeting people who got their, their walking back, you know? And... They didn't have the happiest story, you know. They they got their movement back, but not their feelings. So basically, they still have nerve pain, they still have spasms, they still have problems with their bowels and bladder. They still can't feel the feet, you know. And like they have to learn how to walk and drive with not feeling it. And not only that, but also the rest of the world looking at them and not realizing what they've been through. You know, like I think it gives you like a weird limp, right? You're like feel like you don't really fully um, belong to the disabled community, but you don't fully belong to the able bodied community neither, you know? And and it is hard. It does cause um, a lot of hardships, I think, and confusion, you know? Um, so I think I found purpose in being in a wheelchair. I start When I started in the disability community, I started talking to newly injured people, and I just felt like my wheelchair is what makes me unique, you know? Right now, honestly, if I got my walking back, what would that leave me in the world? You know, and I feel like I would feel more lost at this point because I've already gotten things down packed in my wheelchair so much that for me, it would be harder for me to go back now. With everything that I've learned, everything that I know, everything that I've been through, I think that um, it would affect me a lot, you know, to have to then switch my mindset and learn all these new things walking or struggle walking the walker, you know. Um, so that, and, and that's just what helps me think the day you know like who knows if if i got an offer to walk tomorrow who knows if I really take it or not you know honestly but for me day to day this is just what helps me walk. um so yeah let's go to chelsea what's up with you how's pt going yeah so i um i right after i got out of the hospital i was going to um outpatient rehab at um, Santa Barbara Cottage and um, I think it's a great facility they have like a lot of um, different equipment for spinal cord injury and so 
Um, I I enjoyed it. It was a love hate relationship for sure at first because I would get you know so frustrated with myself with you know not being able to do certain things or just not you know um, building up that strength quick enough you know and so I had to really learn to be really patient with myself and just be okay with that process and just you know just be okay with what I was doing and look at like the small improvements that I was making instead of like wanting to rush in and just, um, you know, make these huge improvements and just be okay with it. And um, they had one of these exoskeleton suits in there and or machines or whatever. And I really, really, really wanted to try it out. But my PT kept saying, he's like, you just, you know, you just don't have enough function or whatever to try that out. And he's just like, I don't feel safe enough to put you in that suit and so I just kind of came to terms with it but um I mean if I was offered to like try one today or to walk or whatever I would be pretty stoked about it like I would be down to try it but it's not something that's like that I need to do in my life or that I'm like oh I have to walk again or anything like that Mm -hmm. um I've kind of come to terms with that and I'm okay with it you know um and I do have a st- standing frame here at home that I use, and, and I enjoy that, too. So um, I like doing that. Um, but as far as PT here at home, I try and do just, like, workouts here at the house. Um, try to do it at least three times a week. But um, I would love to have, you know, a, a PT come to the house and, and help me train and stuff, too. But as you mentioned before, it's just so expensive you know having somebody personally come to the house and where I'm located we don't have any rehab centers other than Santa Barbara that's like really nearby um and it's also super expensive too you know just to get back into that but um yeah yeah definitely I totally feel everything that you're saying you know and I do think that focusing on the small things is so important you know um because I am in incomplete, I started getting movement back. So basically, like, my thigh started to twitch. And then I could, like, um, like my knees, I can push, like, my knees. And let me tell you, when I when that happened first, I couldn't even breathe. I was crying so hard. I was so excited. Like, I couldn't believe. Like, it gave me some kind of hope in my heart, right? But then, like, so then after that, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be walking any week now. Like, look at me. I'm getting back movement. I'm getting back movement. And then weeks go by. Months go by, nothing, right? All that is causing me is more pain, honestly, because it's like now these moments are happening involuntary. You know, it's causing more nerve pain, and all the doctors are telling me is pain is good, you know, but it doesn't feel very good for me to be feeling it, you know? (laughs) So, yeah. um, Okay, let's go to Maya. Um, I totally relate to that statement about pain is good. That's what the doctors all tell you, and... It doesn't feel good, and I forgot to mention it earlier, but um, I do run a support group about pain management and disability, you know, so I just wanted to throw that out there uh, for anybody who follows me or deals with that. um, It is something that I am working on, and um, with physical therapy, I also have a love-hate relationship with it. I love physical therapy because I feel like when I'm not working out constantly or if I'm falling off of my therapy schedule... um, my muscles deteriorate very quickly. And I feel like, I don't know if it's like that for any other quads, but I feel like I feel that happening. Like it happens slowly and I start feeling more weak and then it's more pain. So I just don't want to go through that. And I'd rather stay in physical therapy and continue on. But then again, physical therapy is super expensive. Living in Illinois, um, earlier, I know I said I'm from Chicago, but Nobody knows where, I, where I'd where i be from if I said where I'm really from. I live about an hour and a half south of Chicago. And um, the only thing that's around me is cornfields. Definitely not a physical therapy center. Uh, so it's hard driving up to Chicago, especially now in the winter. Um, it's going to be snowing and it's far. Um, and I can't always just count on my mom to drive me up there and spend all day at physical therapy and driving in traffic on the way home. So it is, it's, it's difficult because I feel like it's something that I need, but at the moment it's not feasible for me. And then also with COVID, um, I don't understand how they're telling me I can't go to physical therapy because 
um, my injury is too high. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like, I'm not sick because I'm injured. You know, um, my immune system is fine. I understand that as a quad, I can't cough more. Um, and that's an issue. But that's that's my hate part with physical therapy right now. There's just so many stipulations at the moment because of COVID and just things that aren't feasible for a lot of people. Um, luckily, we do have Shirley Ryan here in Illinois, and um, it's a pretty good therapy center. So when I am able to go, I do get good therapy. Um, but fighting with ins- insurance is another thing. You can only get therapy for so long, X amount of weeks, and then you have to fight for it again. And it's like, I I have an injury that's lifelong. It's permanent for a reason, you know. And I don't make enough money to help, you know, to be helped. I don't make enough money to work out with you guys. And I should I not live my best life, you know? So yes, it's hard. I've on many of these. Yeah, it, it is hard. It is a love and hate relationship, you know. And um, all these things are very tough to grasp, you know. And it sucks that it's like something you have to eat. You know, and dealing with insurances, I think, has been very, very hard, too. You know, um, just that, like, fighting, even when it comes to pain. Like, I have been out of my pain kids, and they're just like, oh, wow, it's not skipping today. You know, they just do not care, you know. And so when you feel like you have to be, like, fighting for something that you need, it's almost like you're, like, telling the truth, and they just hear, are t- you're, they're telling you that you're lying, you know. And you're just like, I don't understand what could be worse than this. You know, and it doesn't make sense. And I think that pushes a lot of people away from it as well. You know, um, that's why I'm just a big advocate too for um, exercising daily to just get stronger. You know, you never know what you're going to get back, but working on it helps with pain, it helps with your movement, it helps you with your independence, you know. So um, I think that's so important. Okay, let's go to Norma. Um, I, I've had both worlds. I've had really good insurance when I was employed, and then I went down to not having uh, great insurance at all. I did experience the, um, I did experience great therapy when I had good insurance. I had a lot more sessions compared to now. Um, it also depends on the therapy the therapist that you have, a lot of them are not as motivated and want to um, help you. I don't, I don't know how to say it. Like a lot of them just are just doing their job. So it's important for us to be our own motivator and um, get the best we can out of every session and get as much therapy as you can at home with a friend or a relative. If we're fortunate enough um, and have them rotate our bodies as much. We have to be the dictators and tell them what we need. And again, we do have to be fortunate enough to have a person who is willing to help us because that's the best therapy we're going to get is here in our own home. Yeah, I agree. We don't always have it though. Yeah, it was a big point for me when I realized like that what I was going to the therapy place and doing was just something that I could do at the at home. You know, and like. Even more better, I could do it better because I was literally showing up and like showing them videos of the Rolettes and being like, look, make me do this, you know, and like they were just not grasping what I needed, you know, and it was very frustrating for me, you know. Yeah, so, some, yes. some therapists will help encourage you and will help motivate you and you leave there feeling like on fire, like, oh, I did great or I stood today or I moved my fingers today. Any little uh, improvement makes you want to do better but again um based on my um six years like this i found that i had to be my own supporter because not even a family member is going to help get me through every day the people who help me are my community you guys and uh, ourselves yeah yeah we're gonna do it We, we are this panel we're a strong group of women definitely and yes, Sean, yes. he's a strong Three, man, but we're a strong group of women because we could have easily given up. Yes, yes, totally. And like all these things are hard, you know. And like I do hear, you know, the statement of like, you know, not wanting to be like an inspiration and stuff like that. And like, being like, I, like we don't have a choice whether to get up or not, you know. But I feel like we do have a choice. I've met a lot of people that choose not to live. 
that choose to let the pain take over them, that choose to take the medication take over them, that let the, the depression take over them, you know? So we are strong getting out of bed and in our lives. We are strong being able to show our faces on these platforms and share our stories because some people let, they let this injury take over them, you know? So yes, be proud of that. Attack yourself on the path, you know? Um, so yes, let's go to Ashley. So for me, my PT experience was actually a pretty good one. So I am in Chicago as well, like Maya. And I also went to Shirley Ryan for both my inpatient and day rehab. I was going to go for outpatient until COVID happened. So unfortunately, it was a lot. I only able to go to therapy my only, not even to, all through my first year of being injured because of COVID. It was an insurance because insurance only allows you to go a number of days, and that's a whole nother dumb topic. I hate insurance. Um, but in terms of PT, I love Shirley Ryan. I would go back. I would talk good about Shirley Ryan all day, every day. And because literally those PT there, my two PT therapists that I had and my, the other ones that I worked with that weren't my core therapist. I still talk to them because they are just, they were like my therapist and my PTs all in one. I love like, that. But I don't yeah. think I would be as strong as I am now without my. And do you feel like your, um, your main focus is like getting stronger or is it hard walking? Oh, I think early on for me personally in the ICU, I realized like, oh, my, my legs aren't, aren't going to ever move again. Because I also had my sister who was already in rehab when I was still in the ICU. So I saw her and I saw, I saw her go through the motion of realizing I wasn't going to walk again. And I was like, oh, wow, that's going to be me too. I'm not going to walk again. So my goal has never been to walk just to kind of to move how my body is. Yeah, that's an important, that's a hard and important realization, you know, mm -hmm. I think, um, throughout your injury whether it's the beginning or whether it's even 10 years down the line you know that hits you you know and like it is hard because this, this injury is so up in the air so the doctors are telling you like maybe one day soon or not you might walk you know and so you're like what you know like what does that mean you know and it, it is hard being in a community where everybody's different you know, where you can't really talk to somebody even with the same exact injury as you and know how they're healing compared to how you're healing. You know, you just never know. Some people get their movement back. Some people get their feeling back. Some people get different things back and some people don't, you know. And I think that that puts everybody in a rough spot. You're like, do I give up? Do I keep fighting? What do I, what do, I do? Can I be that one miracle, you know, or is it not worth it? You know, so like, don't judge yourself. If all these things are going through your head, let the emotions go through. You know, maybe you have to try some different things. Maybe try therapy for a while. See how you feel. You know, if it's making you feel more negative, maybe take a step a step back. You know, um, just definitely trying different things, but um, just not letting it get overwhelm you. I think some people can focus on walking more than their mental health, more than living in this injury. And um, my biggest suggestion is like. I would focus on your mental health first, you know, make sure that you are good, make sure that you're dealing with this, everything that comes with this injury, you know, um, rather than putting all your focus right into walking, you know, that's just my um, personal suggestion to you guys. You don't have to take it, you know, um, but yeah. Okay, let's move on to religion. So religion is a uh, very, very touchy. Um, for a lot of people, you know, um, so for me, I found, I became a Christian when I was like about in high school, so I didn't grow up religious at all, but my mom found a God, and then she started taking me and my brother to church, and I really began, began building a relationship with God, I got baptized, I prayed, you know, I felt like I had that connection before my injury, so when I got shot, um, I just started saying the serenity prayer, um, right away, I started praying and talking to God, and I actually got to watch this footage back because um, in trial, I had to watch the cops 
um, camera footage of me. And it, and it's so crazy to have that image in my head because I was so zoned out and I'm talking to God as if he's right in front of me. Like I am just, I'm just preaching and I'm just like, be with me, you know, and just saying all these things. I can't even remember everything I was saying, but nonstop zoning everything out that was going on inside me and just talking straight to God. And I do feel like God was with me that day. You know, once I got to the hospital, the doctors didn't have answers for me. You know, there was a lot of factors in my injury that they could not explain. And, um, it, you know, I did feel grateful when they were telling me in that moment, even though I lost the use of my legs, I felt grateful to be alive. You know, it wasn't until about, you know, a couple hours later when the adrenaline really wore off and my whole body was like in pain and I was so angry and I was like, wait a minute, I'm like stuck in this bed. Like, you kept me alive for what, God? You know, like, thanks for keeping me alive, but why? You know, like, I'm now I'm stuck in this bed in pain, can't walk, like, for what? You know, I was angry. I remember like a couple of days later, so... um the first couple of days, of course, I was just like screaming in and out of pain. The nerve, the nerve, um, it was so intense for me, the nerve damage, um, that my body, I would like, like 10 to 15 minutes later, just screaming at the top of my lungs. And that went off for a couple of days. So once I like, my body calmed down a bit, I just remember like zoning out and looking at the window. And I just started crying and I just started like yelling at them. And I was like, why are you doing this to me? why i don't i love you i don't understand what i did wrong for this you know i was so angry and i wanted him to be right in front of my face i wanted him to look me in my eyes and tell me what i was angry i wanted an answer you know and because i didn't get an answer that made me more angrier and i really pushed god away you know and i really felt like my prayers what was the point you know, um, before my injury, I was obviously like everything happens for a reason, everything happens for a reason. But now I was like, what the hell is your reason, God? What? I don't understand. What could possibly come good out of this? You know? And that lasted for two years where I was very angry at God. I, I refused to pray. I, I was happy, you know? And it wasn't until I got into the disability community and, um, I went to the Rolex Experience, and the Rolex Experience is a group of about 150 girls all over the world that are all in workers, and you can see them all at eye level, and, you know, it's just a weekend filled of friendships and filled with laughter and filled with, like, just all this positive that I, I hadn't felt since my injury, and I never even talked to anybody else inside of a chair, so that was, like, the first, first event that I even talked to other people inside of a wheelchair. And it wasn't until the fourth night that I was like laying in bed and I started praying to God for the first time. And I was like, thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for bringing me to this event. Thank you for putting me in this position and letting me meet these people. And I just froze because I got chills all over my body. And I was like, am I thanking God right now for this position? Like, I just started crying uncontrollably. And it gives me chills now because I was just like, wow, like, Never did I think that I would be right here thanking God for putting me inside of this world. Like what? Like to me, that was just so mind blowing. And then I felt, and I was like, I'm sorry for not having faith in you. You know, I'm sorry for being angry towards you. And um, it's a big moment for me too, because I also realized God, you know, and God still, and He still has a time whether we're angry or not. You know, and I do feel like, you know, I hear people saying, people that are really religious, they'll say, like, have faith, you'll walk again, right? Like, believe in God, all this stuff, right? But I do have faith in God. And I have faith that God put me in this position for me. And if he wanted me walking, he would have me walking. But he wants me here. And I feel like I've touched more people. I feel like I've done more in my life. I feel like there's nothing in the world that would make me and that is a beautiful feeling, you know, but I had to work hard as a how to get it. You know, it does not come out easy. Nobody said it was easy, but with faith, it's possible. It's worth it, you know? So that's my take on um, religion and God and just a little bit of my journey with it. So let's go to Chelsea. Yeah, so I grew up um, in, like, a Christian household, but... Um, 
Honestly, for the most part, my relationship with God, it's had its ups and downs for sure. Um, uh, and then when I got in, into my accident, kind of like similar to your story at first, you know, with the adrenaline and everything, I was just like, I was just so thankful to be alive. I was just, I was just tripping. I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't believe that I was in a car accident. It was, it was crazy. It just blew my mind at first. Um, and then, um, after that, you know, I was in so much pain too in the ICU. It was, it was just, it was terrible. And so I would just like cry to God. I would just cry out and I would just pray and cry and pray. And that's all I did. And I just felt like it just, nothing was getting better and nothing was going anywhere. And I just didn't understand why. I'm like, why can't you just give me like a little break? Like, I'm in in so much pain. Like, why can't you just give me the smallest break, you know? And I just feel like it wasn't going anywhere for, like, the longest time. Um, And I not only got in a car accident, but I lost a friend. Um, The one that was driving, yeah. So I was just, I was so confused as to why, like, why was my life saved and my friend's wasn't? And so it was just, like, this, this confusing, you know, difficult relationship that I was going with God um and I just didn't understand it so um I was kind of struggling for a while until I got to rehab and I started to get better and the pain kind of you know simmered down a little bit and, and I started kind of coming out of it um and it was like it was this weird like realization when I was in rehab that I felt this like love like this pure love from everybody around me from all my family members and friends that I've never felt before ever and that's when like my eyes opened up and it was like wow I have so many beautiful people in my life that are here for me and that are here to support me and that you know that they have my back and so that's when I kind of became more grateful and stuff um with you know with the support that I have in my life and whatnot um but I was still kind of mad at God like like why you know why did this have to happen to me or like well why this injury you know why not like just have a broken leg arm broken like whatever you know why this injury like what the hell um but um as my as my injuries gone on and as time has gone on I've been blessed with a lot of great things in my life a lot of great friendships caregivers um and just I feel like I've had stuff that's just happened to me in in a good way and um I've been very grateful for that too so yeah I love that so much you know it is hard and I think that when you have that moment of realization where you're like whoa I am grateful for like the moments I'm having with my family for like the laughter you know I am a big advocate for even thanking God for like your eyesight to, for thinking about like the things that um, that you know you still have, like tasting my coffee in the morning, you know, smelling the flowers. People lost that today, honestly. You know, there's people laying inside a bed that still have a mindset, but they can't speak. You know, like there's so many things in this world. You know, so for instead of focusing on the things that we got that we don't have anymore, it's so important to focus on the many many things that we do have. You know, and I think that that's a big step and realization in this injury, you know, and with dealing with your relationship with God. So, yeah, love that. Okay, let's go to Maya. All right, guys, this is um, the topic that I've been the most excited for because religion is just so important to me. It's such a big aspect of my life. Um, Before I was injured, I was actually in active drug addiction um, and I was on drugs for about like four and a half years. Um, well, actually before that, it's a long story. We'll get to that a different day. But, um, within that, when I was, when I was injured, I was actually kidnapped and, um, I was shot left in the ocean for five hours. Um, and when I was shot, um, I was shot in my ear, my neck and my hip. And I just laid there and I just prayed for my family. Um, I just prayed that, my family would be able to deal with my death and that I would 
hurry up and pass because I was freezing cold in the ocean. I'm not even lying to you. That's what I said to God. And I didn't expect my life to be spared. I wasn't living a life that was worthy of that. You know, um, I, so when I woke up in the hospital, um, I was immediately grateful. Immediately. Like, I had no idea why I was alive. I had no idea why I was able to see my mother's face sitting next to me holding my hand, you know, at the hospital bed. Um, I had no idea why I was given a second chance to be a daughter, to be a sister, to be a friend, to be the person that God wants me to be in this world, you know, to be the person that I was meant to be in this world. And um, I've carried that attitude with me throughout my injury. I've been injured for It'll be three years in April, and um, I've been able to give back and serve serve God's kingdom. You know, I've been able to just write my feelings out and just share it on the internet and say what God has done for me in my life. And um, when I was 15, I actually had a chaplain who planted the seeds of God in in me. You know, and um, I was in trouble, and I memorized my first ever ever Bible verse, and that was Colossians 3.15, and it goes, and let the peace that comes from Christ um, rule in our hearts, for as members of one body, we were called to be, to live thankfully, and um, I didn't know that that would be carried with me through everything, you know, because within this injury, there's so many storms, you know, and so much chaos and so much confusion and just so much going on that I'm still able to hold that and to be, to have the peace that comes from God in my heart. You know, I'm still able to get through everything because I have that. And um, that's the most important thing to me because like before this, before the show, when we were getting ready, I was telling Brianna um, that I was listening to my Christian music right before she called because I had to calm my nerves, you know, there's nothing like sitting in God's presence to me, and um, he gets me through everything, so yes. that's my take. Yes, <laughs> I love that so much. There's such a difference. You know, you get asked when people don't believe in God, the biggest thing is, like, how do you know he's there if he's not real, you know? And my answer is, like, because of the way I feel when I have faith in him. Like, because of the – I've seen what it's like not having him and not having him. And for me, it is different when I have that belief, you know, when I know that he's on my side, when I know that he loves me, you know, um, there is just a different in my journey, you know, um, so that's just me, me personally as well. So, okay, let's go to Norma. What was your relationship with God? Um, well, first of all, let me just say that your story so far is super powerful. Thank you for sharing it. That's a transparency that, that will help others with their injury. Um, I've always had a relationship with God. I was always in love with him since I don't know when. Um, After I got paralyzed, um, I knew that I had to cling on to God a lot more because I wanted to give up. I I remember waking up from the hospital and, and wanting to die, wanting to end my life, wanting to jump out of the window and just die. Uh, of course, those were thoughts. I'm paralyzed. There's no way I could have ran to the window and jumped out of the hospital window. But I wanted death. And um, I remember when I came home from the hospital, looking like a mess, pumped up with all these steroids, just not looking like myself, um, waking up every morning when the sun would come into my room and curse God. I would curse him and say, why did you wake me up? You know, why did you wake me up? And I've got three grown sons. Um, and two were living here at the time, I think. I don't remember. They're, they're all out now. But um, I regret saying it because how do I want my life to end when I have three beautiful sons that I say I love? I apologize to them, but my relationship back with God is... Um, I did have those moments where I cursed him out and I cried out to him at the same time. Like, why did you, why at that time I was thinking, why did you do this to me? Why me? I always loved you, God. I was always serving you, God. I lived a pure life, God. I lived clean. I lived this. I lived that. Why, why, why? 
Um, I never really pushed him away. I just would ask him these questions and cry out to him. He answered in many, many different ways. And today I'm very happy to say that um, it sucks that this happened to me. Yes. But I know who I am as a person and as a woman, and I wouldn't change that for the world. The fact that I can't walk is the easy part with my paralysis. It's everything else that we go through that you guys are aware of that we go through inside that make it worse. Right now, I'm going through an issue where I might have to have an eighth surgery because I'm losing motor on my right hand. And um, it's my right hand is already numb. So it's a lot. Am I scared? No, because I think back of my relationship with Christ. He never failed me on the past surgeries. He's made me better. He's made me more beautiful. He's, I was a fake blonde prior to my injury. I was active at my gym. My body was good. My body was amazing back then. But did Norma love herself? No. I learned to love myself jacked up the way I am right here, sitting all crooked, lost, don't have any stomach muscles. Um, but I love me. I let my natural color come out. Like, I love me now. That would not have taken place if it wasn't for the relationship I have with God. So, yes, I love, I love that. You gave me chills. I always, like, want to cry thinking about that. I just want to say this last thing is that all of us here, and even when I go speak to a newly injured, all of us here, especially you guys right now, this is just a comma in our life. This isn't a period. Please believe and trust me. I have a huge testimony gonna, that's going to come up because I'm proclaiming it. I don't know what it is yet, but I know that it's good. Trust him. Know that your story is not over. You that are newly injured, the one year and the three years, it's not over. This is just the beginning. I know you don't understand why it happened to you. I know that God didn't do this to you. He didn't do it to me. It's life. Life happens. And we are strong. You're going to learn that about yourself. We are completely strong women. You're going to get through it. It's a comma. Something great is going to come out of it. Just like something beautiful has already come out of what in my life. But if this is not the end. God is not leaving us like this. And wait till we all come back a year or a few months from now. And we're going to say what God did. It's not over. It is whoa, not whoa. over. Preach, preach, preach. Whoa, I love it, you know? Feeling my heart up. So true. Um, I love it so much. You know, it's so hard to do these things when stuff is going wrong in our lives. But keep faith. You know what? I say if you're going through hell, keep going because it gets better. It gets brighter. And, you know, just like the bad days will be over with, you know, like, I mean, good days will come again. So will bad days, you know? And on those bad days, just remember, good days will come too, you know? Yeah, and again, excuse me, and again, just because we are believers of Christ, it doesn't mean we're not going to have the bad days. I have them far too often. You have to have somebody that you trust and you can call or even text, hey, pray with me, talk with me, to get you out of that dark state that you can fall into i still fall into a dark state i make sure that i get out of it within a day but there are moments in my life where don't look at me and don't talk to me because i'm in that mentality where i i just i just don't like life right now and yet i love god is it and it's possible to have all those emotions that i'm sharing with you I love him, and I know I'm his favorite, <laughs> but I'll still have those moments where leave me alone. I need, there's something going on in, in myself, and it's normal. I just yes. want to tell you guys that it is normal. It's so normal, and like, like I said, God can handle that questioning. God can handle that anger. You know, it, it's perfectly normal for us to have questions. It's perfectly normal for us to have doubts. You know, it doesn't make you wrong. It does not make you like God hates you, you know, and I just want to say all those things because I know that um, it all goes through all my heads, you know, it's easy to, to doubt, you know, uh, but yeah, so let's go to Ashley. Um, so for me, I was raised Catholic, um, went to Catholic school, went to Bain, and when I was really, really, really young, I actually started questioning God and just existed 
students in general. And by the time I was in high school, honestly, and still to this day, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily a religious person. I'm more of like a spiritual person. I think that everything happens for a reason. Um, I've never felt like I this injury, I was being punished because I feel like I said, like everything happens for a reason that there is a purpose why I'm here. I know that like, I'm going to have good days. I'm going to have bad days. And a bad day doesn't mean a bad life. And I appreciate the good. I appreciate so much more now. So much more like self-aware of myself and like the world. And so, yeah, say more. I'm, I'm more spiritual than religious. Yeah, so I think I feel, I feel the same values, but it's like, just I just don't believe in like a God. Yeah, I think everybody has like what works. Sorry, my dog is just acting crazy right now. Um, I think everybody has what works best for them, right? So like, I think even like having that faith in um, like a spiritual anything you know there's many different religions i'm not saying that god has to be your god you know but have faith in something have morals you know? um have something like where you feel like you could get those emotions out you know and, like, life has a bigger path, you know because honestly i just feel like it's an it's a lonely journey um when you don't have that faith, you know in something and it's a lonely journey to feel like life is a passion like life is all to get you you know um, it can just be lonely and so uh, yeah I think having that relationship with him has definitely helped me on those days you know um, where I just need something to boost me you know where I just feel like I need to just talk out to God you know and just like get these emotions out you know it's whatever works best for you um so yeah um I love that so much you know like this was such a, a deep and strong conversation and I know that I talked to many people that have ups and downs with God, you know, with being injured like this, because I feel like we're taught, you know, when you're good, good things happen. And if you're bad, bad things will happen. So then when bad things happen, you're like, what the hell, you know, like, I'm a good person, because I feel like all of us believe, like, deep down, I like, we're a good person, whether, like, we're doing something that's bad or not, like, we still have good morals, right? We still, yeah, we still have we had someone, so, um, a friend of mine, Someone I didn't even know, like, about our, me and my sister's situation and, like, the other people that were involved in the accident. Like, bad things happen to bad people. And I was like, no. Yeah. Bad I, think things happen to I think even in church. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, like, um, this image, right? So, that's the first thing that comes to people's mind, and that would bother me. Because when I'm out in the store, you want to come up and pray for me because you feel like something's wrong with you. You know, and that bothered me because it was like, does everybody who's looking at me think that I'm a bad person and I just need to be punished for this, you know? And like, who knows if they do or not, but I just had to change my beliefs, you know? And I think that that's where, honestly, you lose a lot of friends and even family members because basically when something like this happens to somebody, you know, that's good or somebody that, you know, that they love, they're, it's shoved in their face that bad things don't always just happen to bad people. Life just happens. Life is very unpredictable. And I think that scares people off. You know, it, it makes them um, just just like overwhelmed with life, right? Because um, they're seeing their own eyes that something bad is happening to somebody that they care about, you know? And they want to block that out. They don't want to pay attention to that. They don't want to um, um, think about, uh, like, like tomorrow you know like everybody has those little cliche things you know say I tomorrow's not coming but nobody wants to really believe that something's gonna happen tomorrow right you know so I really feel like this shows that in their face and um I didn't know how to react to it you know so a lot of people's comments are based off of their own ignorance you know, um, and that's just what it comes down to. You know, um, I'm a different person, and what matters is what I believe in my heart, and that's all that matters. You know, um, so and yeah. 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 I feel like everything happens for a reason, and everybody on this earth has a purpose. And like, just like all of us here today, we're all here to spread, spread awareness. Away. And disability, and we wouldn't be able to get that if we didn't experience this ourselves. Yeah, and that's hard.
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I think it's watching like, the pieces fall together, you know, and like that just really makes me like sometimes I want things, but but life gives you what you need, you know. Yeah. And of course, that's frustrating, right? Because you're like, oh, I want this now, you know. But like, would I have ever said I want to realize? Like, I would have never said that. But God knew that this is where I needed to be in my journey. You know, and I think that that's powerful. And I think that it's it's going to be hard. You know, like Norma said, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have doubts, you know, let them come, you know, just remember again to not let it last too long, you know, talk to a friend, get some positivity going inside of your brain, you know, don't let it take over at you. Don't let this injury win. You know, this injury doesn't take a break for you. Don't take a break for it. You know, you need to live your life. You're alive. You know, if you just lay there, if you give up, you're letting this injury win. You know, and screw that. I'm a fighter. You know, I, I didn't go through all this in my life just to give up now to let this injury win over me. No way. You know, so like whatever you need to do to help you get through that, to get to that point is what you need to do, whether it's praying, whether it's journaling, what whatever you need to leave, you know, um, but you are going to go through those processes. It's going to be an, a roller coaster of emotions, you know, even even as aware as I am and as um, my relationship with God, I still have those days where I'm questioning, where I'm angry, you know? You're going to say, things happen, you know? So, um, yeah, I think this conversation was so powerful. You know, I love what everybody said so much, and I think it's so important to touch on. Um, you know, like, everybody has their different beliefs, you know, but I just wish that there was a panel like this for me to listen to when I was first injured, um, you know, because... This is, this is all stuff that I had to, you know, like, talk to other people in, in the community about and, like, really, like, get in the root of this issue, right? My relationship with God, you know? So, um, so yeah. Um, and does anybody else have any other questions or anything that they want to mention about any other topics? No? We're good? Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us. Let's go um, around and just say um, our name and maybe our Instagrams one more time, and then we'll close it out. So I'm Brianna. You can definitely message me about anything that we talked about or any other um, topics. I'm an open book. Um, my Instagram is brianna.rolls.com, and you can message me there. And um, let's go to Chelsea. Yeah, uh, my Instagram, I'm pretty sure it's just Chelsea with, like, a little dash um theoric um and yeah you could feel free to message me anytime i'm also an open book um i love you know having conversations and meeting new people and making new friends yes love it okay let's go to maya i'm maya um i had a great time on this show it was great conversation um thank you for having me brianna um and you can find me on instagram at roll with me with two e's or you can get to um, my support group um, about addiction and disability through at Miss Wheelchair Illinois 2020. Yes, love it. Okay, let's go to Norma. Norma Villar at Wheelchair Boxing. And again, it was a pleasure, you know, seeing all of you today. And I'm also available to any one of you if you need um, someone to talk to or chat with. I'm here. Yes, thank you. And let's go to Ashley. Um, so my Instagram is Ashley the Ryan 16 and I have a joint Instagram with my twin sister who is also injured, Ashley Nikki Story. And then I also appear on my sister's YouTube channel a lot, and that is mm. Nikki <laughs> Thank you so much. So the information should be on the screen, if not in the description. And yeah, we're all available for you. Thank you to Sean and the Lip to Roll channel for having us on again. I'm so excited. We'll be coming back every third Thursday for a woman's show at 3. And then Sean's show is Live to Roll um, channel every Tuesday at 3.30. So make sure you tune in, listen to some topics. And yeah, I had such a great time talking. Thank you girls for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.